Hey investors, Kylie here, welcome to the channel. So the Glasgow Climate Change Conference has had a lot of people questioning what they can do better to reduce their carbon footprint. And this is a really important topic for me, as I'm sure it is for a lot of you out there. So I thought I'd share today seven renewable energy stocks that I think are worth watching. I've picked these stocks because I've been watching the space for a long time. There's no methodology to selecting these stocks other than the fundamentals and because they interest me. And in my view, some of these stocks could be the way forward for the industry. Okay, so first on my list is one that everybody knows, it's Tesla. So you might be wondering what the deal is here, you know, battery powered cars aren't necessarily part of the renewable energy space. Plus, you know, batteries are just powered from electricity, which could be generated from, you know, coal powered plants. But Tesla primarily makes this list because alongside its solar panel advancements, it's also very big in the energy storage space. And the real answer to moving forward with renewable energy is storage. The main reason we're not all using renewable energy yet is because it's totally unreliable. You know, when it's not windy, uh, we don't get wind power. When it's not sunny, we don't get sun power. The answer is to get better battery solutions, a better way to store our energy so that we can tap into it at any time. If we could generate energy from renewables and then store that energy indefinitely, the problem would be solved. In a recent earnings call, uh, the CEO Elon Musk said, as the world transitions to sustainable energy production, solar and wind are intermittent and by their nature really need battery packs in order to provide a steady flow of electricity. And when you look at all the utilities in the world, this is a vast amount of backup batteries that are needed. Tesla combines its solar and energy storage revenues um, in reporting its financials and it said that Revenues for the total energy division stood at US uh, $806 million, which is a 36% year on year increase, while its cost of revenue was $803 million. So that's a profit of around $3 million. So although $3 million isn't a very big profit margin, especially for a major company in the United States, having any kind of profit margin at all at this stage when it's still such a growth area is pretty solid. Investing in a diversified business like Tesla is a much safer option than, say, jumping into a pure play company. Okay, next on my list is Enphase Energy, possibly one of Tesla's biggest competitors out there in the solar and energy storage space. Enphase Energy is a US company. Uh, like Tesla, it's listed on the NASDAQ. It's also done very well over the last 12 months. Um, similar to Tesla, its stock price has jumped about 100%. The company says that it develops, designs, manufactures, and sells home energy solutions that connect solar generation, energy storage, and management on one platform. It is essentially one of the largest players in the solar inverter market. By tapping into the energy storage space alongside solar panels, it basically allows the company to stabilize um, home and grid impacts. More recently, Enphase has also moved into the electric vehicle charging space. That being said, it has a PE ratio of around 218, which is pretty high compared to say the average on the NASDAQ, which is 27. So very high, which could mean that it's overvalued or it could also just mean that, um, you know, investors think that there's a pretty bright future ahead for the company, similar to Tesla. Next on my list is Iberdrola. Iberdrola is a Spanish company and it's listed on the Madrid Stock Exchange although you can also buy it over the counter um, in the United States, or you could tap into its US subsidiary, Avant Grid, which is listed in the United States. So Iberdrola is a pretty interesting one. It is a global investor in renewable energy, and it's one of the world's biggest producers of wind powered energy, if not the biggest. In fact, Iberdrola is one of the 10 largest holdings on the S&P Global Clean Energy Index. This is an index used by clean energy ETFs, for example, the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF. And the company says it has plans to become the world's biggest renewable energy company, which is a title that's currently held by Tesla, according to some analysts, although people have different views on this. This conglomerate has been making a lot of moves lately. The Iberdola Group and its subsidiaries supply energy to almost 100 million people in dozens of countries around the world. It says that it carries out renewables, networks, and commercial activities in Europe, Spain, the UK, Portugal, France, Germany, Italy, and Greece, as well as the US, Brazil, Mexico, and Australia. And unlike a lot of renewable energy companies, it's making money. 
In 2020, it achieved a turnover of 33 billion euros with a net profit of over 3.6 billion euros. That is a sizable profit. That being said, by 2021, the company was carrying a sizable amount of debt, upwards of $38 billion. And that was up over 8% in the last month. This company is an absolute powerhouse in the renewable energy space, and it's absolutely worth watching. Next on my list is Northland Power Inc. It is a Canadian company and it's listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. So Northland is essentially a power company that focuses on generating energy from natural gas, wind and solar. And it has operations in Asia, Europe, Latin America and North America. As of 2021, it says the company owns or has an interest in facilities that are capable of 2,681 megawatts of power generation. Just to put that into perspective, one megawatt uh, can power up to 700,000 homes. While over the last year or so, its stock price has fallen by around 4%, it has somewhat rebounded more recently. So up over the last six months or so, it's basically flat. And if you look a bit further over the last five years, it's done really well. It's up about 84% over five years. That being said, the company is in a bit of debt. It is currently holding around 7 billion uh, of debt as of June, 2021. That is down from 8.2 billion a year prior. Okay, so next on my list, I wanted to look at Tidal Power Companies. And I wanted to include Tidal Power here because it's such an untapped technology. Essentially here, energy is created from ocean movements such as waves or general tidal movements. The big benefit to this technology is that tides are essentially predictable, unlike say wind. And this makes it easier for engineers to design efficient systems. And tidal technologies and equipment are also proven to last a lot longer than other renewables, say around 120 years. The big downside is that it's still just too untouched. There hasn't been enough investment, meaning it's still way too expensive to produce. And these power generators are also too far offshore. So at this stage, it's still too hard to get the power onshore to communities. That hasn't been solved yet. And so for this reason, there aren't really a lot of wave power technology stocks. And of the few that are out there, they're pretty small and very speculative. Basically, these are penny stocks, so there'd be risk involved. And the three stocks I found here were Eco Power Wave, uh, which is listed on the NASDAQ, OPTT, which is also uh, listed in the United States, and probably my favorite on the list, which is Carnegie, because it's an Australian listed stock. And it's worth mentioning here that all three of these companies are pretty heavily in debt and quite reliant on outside investment, often from the government. So it's definitely worth doing your research if you're interested in investing in this space. Finally, I wanna look at ETFs because if you're not sure which of these renewable energy stocks to invest in and you're not sure which of these stocks are going to do well over the long term, because it's a pretty hard uh, guess to make at this stage in the game. You could instead invest in a renewable energy exchange traded fund, which holds multiple company stocks in the same space. And some of the top ETFs in this space include the iShares Global Clean Energy ETF, the First Trust NASDAQ Clean Edge Green Energy Index Fund, and the Enevsco Wilderhill Clean Energy ETF, and finally, an Australian listed one, the Vanek Global Clean Energy ETF. I think one of the most exciting things about investing in the renewable energy space is that the technology hasn't yet reached its full potential yet, which means there's still a lot of space to grow. Wind power has reached about 90% of its full potential, but solar uh, power has only reached about 15%. And tidal power has reached pretty much 0%. It's com almost completely untapped. And at the same time, energy storage solutions at this point are still too expensive to be deployed en masse. And until these battery storage solutions um, have been solved, then renewable energy is not really a feasible option for the future. For example, here in Australia, about 70% of our energy is created from coal power. Coal power is obviously terrible for the environment. And so we're trying to switch over to renewable. A lot of people now have solar panels on their roofs. And we also have some wind energy that we're using. The problem is that when it's not windy and it's not sunny, we need to switch back to coal again. But the problem is you can't just switch coal on and off. Coal needs to be burning nonstop. So even as hundreds of thousands of households are rolling out solar panels on their roofs, it's not actually making as big of an impact as they might think. 
until we can better store the energy that is created from solar or created from wind when it's, when it's windy and we can tap into that whenever we want, renewable energy cannot meet its full potential. And that's why the battery storage space is so crucial and part of the reason that I also invest in Tesla. Anyway, I'd love to hear from you. Are you invested in the renewable energy space? If so, which are your top picks? That's it from me. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and feel free to leave comments below. Thanks guys.